Take a moment, really feeling the outer legs holding in and the way the feet land on the floor. So you're using the legs to help you ground down. <clears throat> Sit up nice and tall, broaden across the collarbones. Feel your breath and close your eyes. Let your breath be natural. And see if you can relax the breath a little. Relax the mouth. And bring your hands in prayer. Open the collarbones again. And see if you can soften the breath. Begin with a single arm. Bow your head down and feel your breath. Bring your hands down, palms up. Still feel that soft, easy breath. And then raise your head and open the eyes. And change that cross of your legs. <clears throat> Good. Interlock, extend your arms in front and up. Reach them out, down, and chain. Take your second interlock and reach them forward again and up. Breathe and then reach them out and down. Good, all right. Let's stretch the legs out. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's do a child's pose. First, just do, oh, first put a blanket under you and just do child's pose like that, where you have a soft pad underneath your legs. And then stretch your arms, take your hips back, lower your forehead down and breathe. So just do that first, where you just do a child's pose with something soft underneath your legs. Breathe. Stretch your arms. Stretch your arms. Good. And then come up and take a bolster, minimum, a bolster under your chest and do the same pose. So if you need it a little higher than just a bolster, then you're gonna throw a blanket on top, but at least a bolster at the at minimum here. And this time you don't need to stretch your arms, just relax. Good. And then come up and stretch your legs out. So just sit down, stretch your legs out. So you undo the bend of your knees. And then if you have a strap, get it. And if you don't have a strap, we'll just use our hands. But if you have a strap, have it near you. And um, lay down. Well, we won't use the strap at the very, very beginning, but Lay down and stretch your legs out on the floor. 
and lengthen from your waist out through your feet. Breathe and stretch the arms over your head if your shoulders allow for that. So you're taking a long extension through the um, arms and legs and try to feel your waist front and back long and breathe. As if you, as if pulling your arms away from your legs and your legs away from your arms could release and lengthen the back and the waist. And then bring your arms down and bend your legs and put your uh, right foot in the strap if you have it. And so if you don't have the strap, you can just hold on to your um, leg. But most of you have a strap. So go ahead and stretch that right leg up. Lengthen the back again though. So as if you were <laughs> doing the last pose. And then some of you might stay here with the uh, left leg bent and that's fine. And if you wanna make it a little bit and more of a stretch, you could take your left leg on the floor. Um, and when you stretch your left leg out on the floor, if that's too much in your back or your, or your right hamstring, then you just bend that leg back in. But try to get long through your waist again as if you were doing the one where you were stretching your arms over your head and you were stretching both legs away from the arms. So you wanna keep the right and left side of your back long and the right and left side of your abdomen long. And then just step your left foot in the strap and we'll change the sides. So optional to leave the right leg bent and just work on stretching the left leg as well as lengthening the back or sliding the right leg out and using that to extend the back. And make sure you're breathing. So I want you to stretch your legs right now. This is what you know why I'm having you do this right now is I want you to stretch your legs and open up the backs of your legs, but I also want you to be conscious of your back and keeping it nice and long. Okay, stepping your right foot up in the strap, lowering the left, optional to leave the left one bent or straighten it. So you're, you're working on stretching your right leg, but also lengthening the belly and the back and breathing. And then change it over to the other side. So stretching the backs of the legs and lengthening the belly and the back, breathing. Good, and then just bend, them, bend the leg that's up and put it on the floor, stretch both legs out on the floor and really push out through your legs, out through your legs like I grabbed your heels and pulled your heels away from your waist. Keep doing that and then take your arms over your head as if I gently held your wrists and pulled away. So you're trying to lengthen through the right and left side of your abdomen and the right and left side of your back, low back, by stretching your arms and legs away from the waist, but breathe. And then bend your legs and lower your arms, hug your knees in. At first, just leave your knees and feet kind of close to each other and just hug in, soften the belly. And then separate your knees and feet a little bit more and hug in, soften the belly. And then bring the knees and feet back together and hug in, make sure you're breathing and then separate them. Knees and feet separate from each other and hug the knees towards the armpits now. Take your knees wide and your feet wide. There you go, good. 
and then lower your feet to the ground. Let's roll over to sit up. Sit in a cross legs if you can. If you need to sit um, up on blankets under your hips to relieve the knee and the hip, make sure you do that. And so if you can sit flat, sit flat on the floor. But if there's any difficulty in the low back or the hips or knees, then sit up on your bolster or blankets. And then take a gentle turn to the right. So you're measuring with the buttock bones gently down evenly as best you can with the two buttock bones. And then center and going the other way and just trying to release both buttock bones down evenly, even though you're revolving in the upper body and breathe. And then center and changing the fold of the legs. And then when you're ready, to the right. And then to the center and to the left, looking for as best as you can, that even feeling with the two buttock bones down. And then center and straighten the two legs out, stretch your feet, stretch your legs. Good, and then child's pose again. So knees apart, stretch the arms, lower the forehead. Create length in your back by pressing your hands down and taking your hips away from your hands. And then coming up a little bit, lay down on your belly. Stretch your legs back, lengthen the belly, lengthen the back, walk your legs back, back, back. And then when you're ready, catch your right foot with the right hand and we'll stretch the quad a little bit. Tailbone down. The head is optional. You can lower your head and rest it or you can leave your chest up, whatever works um, is fine. And then releasing and changing over to the other side. Good. And then uh, take your bolster or two blankets fold it up to be the size of a bolster bring it alongside the right side of your body and then bring your right leg up and on that um, bolster or a stack of blankets and then turn your belly away from it so so right leg bent out to the side from the hip so you're lining up your right knee directly out of your hip joint you have to lay on your belly to start it uh-huh. And then you want to see if you can get your foot up on the bolster too. So it's your knee, shin, and foot. And then you turn your belly away from that. You use your arms on the floor, your forearms, and you kind of lift up a little bit and turn your belly away. And then your head, you could just do whatever. So some of you need another um, little pillow for your head, for the neck. So you could always grab something if you need to support your your head and then you want to relax your shoulders relax your arms so you're not holding yourself up with your arms and your left leg your straight leg you want to take it slightly to the left so it's like you're opening your pelvis a little bit more across the front of your pelvis allowing that to Broaden.
kind of lean on your left side, let your bent leg come off of the bolster and either turn around in your room or bring your bolster over on your other side. And take your time. When you're ready, it'll be your left leg that you put up there. Take it right out from the hip joint so the knee is aligned with the hip straight out and your shin and foot are also on the pillow. And then you're, when you lay yourself down, you want to uh, open your belly away from your bent leg. So you're not just laying on your right side. You have to open across your chest, across your belly, uh, and even walk your right leg, your straight leg out to the right a little bit. So it's not like you're just leaning on your right side. It would be more like you're laying um, with your belly facing straight down if possible. Yeah, that's better. And then try to relax. Kind of curling up on your right side, letting the leg on the bolster come onto the other leg, and then go ahead and roll over onto your back. And the knees, recline onto the back. When you're ready, cross your right ankle over your left knee. Some of you might just stay there, depending on the knee and the hip of the right side, or you could pull the legs in to the chest. Relax your belly a little. We'll change it over to the other side. Stepping down, crossing the left one over, optional to stay here or bringing the legs in. Let's repeat these, changing back to the first side when you're ready. After you've had a few breaths on that side, change over to the second side. and then feet down, roll over, and sit up. So we're going to come into downward facing dog with the head on support. So if you're like me, if you have a blanket underneath you, you might need to move that out of the way so your hands and feet are not sliding on the blanket. You always wanna have your hands and feet on the sticky mat. And then um, we're gonna use the head on support. So a few of you might be fine with just the bolster, but many of you will need to add a blanket on it. 
Because when you're doing your dog pose with your head on support, you don't want to be bending your arms to take your head down. You want to just lift up the floor high enough to support the head. So taking the height that you need, when you're ready, stretch your arms, lift your knees, lift your uh, hips. You could go way up with your heels at first. And just see if you can extend the arms and lower the head onto whatever support you're using. If it's not high enough, come down and add more blankets on it. So yeah, it's deceivingly high, but it needs to be deceivingly high, that support for your head. So take your time and yeah, good. Okay, so now you've been there for a few moments. Let's try, um, Bending the knees again and taking the hips way up, way up with the hips, yeah. And then slowly straighten your legs. Slowly straighten your legs. Oh, your poses look really good. Let's come down and take a little rest. So if you, if you can, just come down on your shins, separate your knees and whatever you, you're using for your head, just lay there for your child's pose. So, if you can, you wanna sit back in a child's pose and just use the supports under your chest. Yeah, like that. If that hurts your knees, you know, then of course we have to make some modifications, but we're not gonna be here for too long. So hopefully for most of us, this will be okay. Good, all right. And then when you're ready, prepare again for another downward facing dog with your head down. So at head down and support it. So take your time, stretch the arms and lift the hips. Go ahead and go on up. Take your heels way up at first and really stretch your arms way up with your heels. There you go. And then if you can, um, if you can keep, everything with your spine and your hips, then you can slowly straighten the knees. If you kind of lose everything when you straighten your knees, just bend them again. That's okay. The pose is look, looking very good, everyone. Really good. Okay, so you're there. Breathe smooth and steady. Feel that. And then rest in a child's pose. If that doesn't work, if you can't rest in child's pose, you could lay on your back. All right, and then come on up carefully um to sit on your bolster so we're gonna sit on the bolster with it going the long way um where it's the easier way to sit on it so not like on the narrow side just where it's the easiest way to sit on the bolster good and then just for for the first moment let's just take the feet a little bit apart and legs bend. And then sit up nice and tall and your uh, right leg begin extending it out to a really easy wide leg position. Good, yeah. All right, let's just cross that opposite hand to the um, bent leg and gently turn away from that right side. So yeah, like that. And when you're turning away from your straight leg, try to lower your right buttock bone, like you could release it into the pillow. Good. And then go back in the middle and that leg, just gently bring it in and we'll do that on the other side. So first we're just gonna stretch out with the left and sit up nice and tall. Uh-huh. And then you can gently revolve away from a straight leg, but just as you're turning, <clears throat> keep dropping the left buttock bone down. Like you could release your back waist on the left side to release that leg down. 
and then come back in the middle. Good. Okay. So let's try this leg out like this again. And then if you can, this, uh, the leg that's up towards the ceiling, if you can really comfortably take it to the ground like that, then do. But if you can't do that, then just keep it up in the first position. All right, so then your straight leg buttock bone releasing down and a gentle twist away from the straight leg. Keep that buttock bone surrendering down though. Uh-huh. And then to the center. Now just keep your legs for another moment and let's take a really easy turn towards the straight leg side. Yeah. And then into the center. Okay, good job. Now we're gonna just kind of fold the legs back in and get nice and even. And when you're ready, um, we'll stretch the left leg out. So then the right leg, if it can't drop out to the side, it can stay like this. <clears throat> and those that can easily drop that leg down. Good. Notice how the buttock bones are. So if you shifted way over, see if you can surrender the straight leg buttock bone. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do the same thing where we turn really gently away from the straight leg first. Just make it easy. Just make it easy. And then to the center and turning towards the straight leg a little bit, nice and easy breathing. Good, okay. And then um, fold the legs back in. And now if you can, both legs out, but make it mild, mild enough that you're not um, fighting. And just sit up nice and tall and a gentle turn to the right. Both body bones surrendering down. And then center and gentle turn to the left. Both body bones surrendering down. And then to the center. And first side, gently turning where you're still releasing both buttock bones down. And then center. Take your toes so they're straight up. Don't let your feet roll out. And the other side. Good job. Okay. And then center. Now, if you can, take your um, right hand and just slide it down your right leg a little bit. Like that, good. And, and then the other side, just a little bit. So it's, so it's still kind of like in this mild range where you're not fighting and then go the other, go the first side. Make sure you're breathing. And up, and then the second side. And up, and then the first side. Now maybe you can go a little tiny bit further this time, maybe, if it's available to you. Good, and, and I hope you're breathing and maybe a little tiny further. Good, everyone looks great. Okay, and up. all right, so let's pull the legs in and slide right down flat and straighten them, push them down, gentle twist to the right. So two legs together and down, Don Dawson, uh-huh, and squeeze the shins in as you gently turn to the right. Yeah, there you go. And then the other side. So squeeze the legs together. Good, good, good. Okay, and release. All right, so then just sit comfortably so I can watch, I mean, I can, <laughs> I can demo the next one. And, um, and so we're gonna do wide legs standing, coming forward and releasing the head down onto props. And so some of us are going to use even a chair with blankets on it to put the head down. And some of us will put the head down on maybe a block or um, like I'm gonna show a bolster with a blanket folded up on it. Um, but you know, it could, this could be, like I said, really high, like a chair with blankets on it. So I'm gonna start standing and take my legs out wide. And then you could watch for just a sec. So I've got, I'm gonna have to really work my legs to stabilize my back when I move into this. So I gotta get thighs back, press the outer feet down and keep that as I come forward. So the first position 
will be to put the hands on the floor. Now, if you can't reach your hands to the floor, you could have the bolster turn the other way, you know, and put your hands on the bolster. My arms are straight, my legs are straight, my spine is forward first, and then I bend my arms and lower my head down. And then I'm keeping my legs strong. And then I come back straight arm position first. I walk my feet in a little bit because it makes my legs feel stronger to bring me up. Okay, so we do this pretty regularly. I'm hoping that you're pretty familiar with it. Um, we can get started when you're ready, setting up props in front of you. And then, at, you know, when you're ready, go out nice and wide with your feet. So it's a wide legged pose. Yeah. And then press your outer feet down, take your thighs back, elbows back, and you want to really strengthen your legs. The legs are what support your back in this as you're moving in and out of it. Karin, the chair needs to come towards you or your feet need to go towards the chair. All right, and then keeping your legs really firm, thighs back, outer feet down, lead with your chest, come forward and lower your hands down onto the floor or whatever props you're using and take your arms straight first, spine forward, spine forward. And then bend your elbows and bring your head down. Now, if that's a struggle, then don't go that far. You need more height, okay? If it's a struggle, then you're using something that's too low. <clears throat> straighten the legs, straighten the legs. Now let's start coming up. So straighten your arms and look forward. Straighten your arms and look forward. Walk your feet towards each other a little bit. And then really lift your chest, tighten your knees and stand up and then bring your legs all the way together. Mom, you need higher under your head. Ed, you need higher under your head. <clears throat> Karin, you're working correctly. I want you only in the forward spine position only. Don't round your head down, only forward spine position for Karin. Um, the people that I suggested that need more height, Nancy, you need more height under your head. It needs to be higher. Joni, I can't quite see what you're using. Um, so, all right, yeah. Okay, let's try it again. Walk out wide. Start standing up. Start standing up for me. Stand up. Make your feet point straight forward. Do not toe out. Feet straight forward. Press your outer feet down. Take your inner groins back. Inner groins back, outer feet down. El wide distance, walk your feet apart. Walk out wide. Elbows back, straighten the legs, thighs back. Lead with your chest, come forward, keep your legs absolutely straight. Straighten the legs, hard, straight legs. Put your hands down, stretch your arms. Everyone is in the spine forward. Spine forward, long chest forward. And then Karin, you stand when you need to all the way back up, but everyone else, bend your elbows, put your head down. The legs stay absolutely straight. It's so much better now. Okay, forward again with your spine. Long arms, straight legs, straight arms, spine forward. Walk your feet together a little bit. Tighten your knees. Put your hands at your hips, lift your chest and come up. And then walk your legs all the way in. That was better. That was better, okay? All right. Um, so those that can lay with legs up the wall today, come to the wall, put your legs up. And if you can't do that because you're having your period, then do Supta Baddha Konasana with no props. If you don't have a wall, rest your legs on a chair or couch or bed. Okay, so it's either legs up the wall or legs resting on a chair. 
or if you're not inverting, it's Supta Baddha Konasana. There you go. Okay, so the, so the last pose that you were in with the head down, the wide legs and head down, is kind of like a headstand. It's our, um, our version of a restorative headstand. And this one, where your legs are up, especially if you're doing the one with the legs up the wall, this is considered a kind of resting inversion. So another um, upside down position, but quite supported. We do these in the restorative class because they, I mean, they have their benefits on the organs and the body, but they also affect your nervous system. And so they are preparatory poses for your nervous system to be able to deeply accept the later poses in the, in this class. So these resting and supported inverted poses, the dog pose with the head on support, the wide legs standing with the head down on support, and this one with your legs up the wall and the back resting on the floor. These are poses that help the nervous system prepare for a deep rest that comes later in the class. your jaw, let it recede.
Let your arms come in, uh, bend your legs, roll over, and press up. Okay, so then um, we're gonna sit in Virasan, and those that can easily take soup to Virasan will do that, but a number of you will just stay in Virasan. So <clears throat> I'm in a, you can, if you already know what I'm talking about, you can set everything up. Um, for your soup to Virasan. I'm gonna do it from the side first and then I'm gonna turn um, and face you guys. So for, for your soup to Virasan, go as high as you can with all of the props that you've got at your house. So even if you could easily lay down flat in the pose, you won't, you'll set it up really high. So I'm using um, a bolster and a blanket and another blanket for my head for the soup de Virasan. And I'm just gonna get that all set up so I would be able to lay back. But then I'm gonna turn so I can um, sit in, so, so first you're gonna sit in soup de Virasan. I mean in Virasan, sorry. So first you're just gonna sit in Virasan and don't lay all the way down. But, you know, because some of us won't lay back and some of us are just going to stay here. Actually, I'm not going to turn. I don't need to turn. I'm just going to turn my head. All right. So in Virasan, <clears throat> turn the thighs out, press your outer feet down. And as if you could land more evenly on your shin bones in the center of your shin bones and the centers of your feet. And then, you know, feel how your buttock bones are landing on your um, bolster and try to sit evenly. Good. So your feet should be outside of your hips. You're, it's not like you're sitting on your feet. They're just to the outside. You should be able to slide your thumbs on the inner heel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So those of you that it's a struggle to lay back in Supta Virasana are simply going to stay in here in this pose, sitting upright. And then those that can easily lay back, scooch forward a little bit and then begin reclining. If it hurts your legs, if it hurts your back, then sit right back up and don't lay down today because I don't want you fighting. I don't want you straining. So you're, you're finding more of a sense of ease in this. So maybe half of the class is laying back and the others are seated upright. <clears throat> okay, and then those that are laying back, try to relax, try to feel even right to left. And, and let yourself rest into your props. And those of us that are seated, we're gonna continue rolling the thighs out, evening out the weight in the buttock bones, and then interlock, extend the arms, and overhead with the two arms. Good, lower the arms, and change the fingers and stretch them. Good. From your waist, from your waist, good. And then bringing the arms down. All right, and then the people that are in the reclining version, use your hands and elbows to sit all the way up. And then everyone all the way forward. And I like, I usually come here first and just take a little bit of a pause because my knees kind of, you know, if I move too fast, it can be a little bit like my knees are kind of confused. So I go slowly and then I can sit down one side and stretch the legs out. All right, so then the bolster setup, move any extra blankets so it's just the bolster. Actually, I want you to do 
Um, I want you to do something with this extra blanket. So have a bolster lengthwise and blanket for your head. And then if you have an extra blanket around, open it and roll it. If you don't have two blankets, don't worry, just use the one for your head. But if you have to get the long rolled blanket tube and the bolster plus that added blanket. And then we're going to sit with the back facing this, cross the legs into simple cross legs and wrap this, lift your knees up and wrap this around your ankles and underneath your uh, thighs. So your knees are gonna be up, that's okay. Uh-huh, and then lay yourself back. The buttocks should be on the floor. So your blankets, you can kind of tuck the ends underneath your outer thigh and outer hip area, but not so much that it lifts your buttocks completely off of the ground. And then it should feel good in your back. So you might have to shift a little bit until you find the sweet spot where you can really relax. And the blanket for your head should be under your cervical vertebrae, under your neck, um, at, but not under your shoulders. And then your arms are optional. So, the, so some of you are happy with your arms at your sides and some of you are happier with your hands on your chest and your belly. So whatever is the most comfortable right now for the arms, shoulders, and relax your belly. Change the fold of your legs. Just try to manage to, you know, switch your feet and fix the blanket again. Yeah. I mean, if you can't do that laying down, you just sit up. Yeah. Let your belly feel like it empties back. Not pull it, don't pull it back. Just let it feel like it empties back. It empties towards the spine, towards the bolster, towards the floor. You may naturally begin feeling your breath. Just see if you can let the breath be steady and soft. And then rolling over carefully, come on up. Okay, so the next one, I'm gonna demo. And Karin, I want you to do it with a long, narrow blanket instead of the bolster. And anyone else who decides that it's too much on the back, will use a long, narrow blanket instead of the bolster, but I'm gonna show it with the bolster. 
Um, the legs remain active in this version of Setubanda. So I'm going to um, be sitting on this and laying down and my head is coming this way. So you need to make sure you have space for your head where you're not gonna bump into the wall. So we start with the um, hips elevated up on the pillow. My legs are bent, I recline. And I take a moment really getting the shoulders to touch down onto the ground. If the shoulders are kind of hovering, then you won't get the relaxation in through your neck. So then the legs are going to go out, feet flex, and the outer thigh rolls up towards the ceiling to control the curve in the lower back. So that's where I was saying, if you decide it's too much on your back to be on the bolster, then you come out of it completely and replace the bolster with a long, narrow blanket. So go ahead and set up where you have space for your head, lay down on your bolster, get your shoulders all the way to the ground. And then the legs extend, the feet are on the floor, the heels are on the floor, the feet are flexed. And you push the legs out, roll the outer thighs towards the ceiling. Continue that, do not give up with your legs. So the outer legs are up. The legs are straight in this, the legs are straight out. The legs are out, but flex your feet, flex your feet, stretch your, don't relax your legs. Yeah, harden the legs. Roll the outer thighs towards the ceiling. Outer thighs up. Yes, like that, Ed, correct. Outer thighs up. Don't flop your feet out. Don't relax your legs. Harden your legs, stretch them. Yeah, outer thighs roll up. Inner groins go down. Yeah. Shoulders are down, back of the neck is long. Relax the jaw. If the shoulders are hovering, you will not be able to relax your neck in this. So if that's happening, you slide towards your head more. Get the shoulders down and then stretch the legs out. Outer thighs rolling up, correct. Relax your jaw, let the back of the neck feel long. Good, and then I didn't show you how to get out of this, but just listen to my words, it's easy. Bend your legs, put your feet on the floor and just pause for a moment. So you just gather yourself a little bit. And then when you're, if you can, you lift your hips up a little and push the pillow between your feet and lay your back down on the floor. Yeah. So the bolster that's underneath your back, you try to move it out of the way and lower your body down. And then once your back is flat, then you can roll over. Yeah. Go ahead and roll over and sit up. So just sit for a sec and let me try to, um, so we're not gonna do this again. I should have shown you from the beginning how to get out of it. But so you're there, your shoulders are down and then you lift your hips up and you see if you can push the pillow back, right? And then you just let your back come down. Okay, so for the next time, all right. Um, so now, Supta Baddha Konasana with all of your props. And so make sure you're warm enough. Use the blanket to hold your legs. Set up the blanket for your head, the bolster, long ways for your spine. And, um, you know, if you need extra blankets over you, make sure you have what you need. Feet will come together. 
This blanket wraps around the ankles again and under the outer legs. When you're ready, scooch forward a little bit away from your pillow and then lay down. Adjust the buttocks towards your heels. Make sure the long blanket is actually supporting your legs. And then relax your arms. Adjust the blanket for your head so that it's under your neck completely and not under your shoulders and then relax your arms. And so your, your, again, your arm position today is either at the sides if that's really comfortable for you or on the belly if that's more comforting because I know some of you have some shoulder stuff going on. So then once you get in to Supta Baddha Konasana, supported like this, you wanna see if you can allow your belly to really soften and rest. And when it starts to relax, it might feel like it kind of spreads. Allow for that, allow for your belly to feel like it's dropping open from the central line out towards the sides and then the, across the waist and the pelvis, the same feeling. So that, that spreading from the center, for me, it kind of starts at the belly um, and then I can move into the waist and the pelvis and it might, you know, be opposite for you. So doesn't matter, but just see if you can allow for that falling open feeling. And once you get the front body to relax like that, see if you can also even allow your back waist to spread from the spine out to the sides. And that may be imaginary, but you could allow just the vision of it, the feeling of it. Soften the jaw, letting the jaw recede, back of the head releases away from the shoulders. The breath may naturally um, be coming in smooth and steady. Just follow it, feel it.
Now move, take your legs out and move a vertebrae or two uh, off of the bolster. Lift your hips up and just shift forward towards your feet, a vertebrae or two, so that you end up more with your ribs on the bolster um, and less of your back waist on the bolster. So move towards your feet a little bit and then adjust the blanket under your head again because it's because it's probably too far back. And then, you know, of course, if you need that blanket over you, you could just put the blanket over your legs if you need it. So, so the legs go out, let the legs go out and keep that chest support, but get it so it's under your ribs and not so much under your back waist. And then your arms, if you can, um, let your arms rest open at the sides, palms up. And if you can't tolerate that, then you need to adjust the arms back onto the um, chest. Relax your arms though, relax them. Just let them, let your elbows fall against the, against the floor. Your head should not be thrown back. Your, your chin should not feel like it's up towards the ceiling. Your chin is slightly down towards your heart. And then really relax your chest and your belly. And the tops of your legs. Allow the tops of your legs to feel heavy. Ed, your bolster should be turned, um, Ed Abrams, your bolster should be turned the other way. It should be turned long ways with your spine. Ed Dawson, you're fine. Yeah, take something under your head though. There you go. Let the legs relax out, release the legs. If you're not, if you're really not comfortable laying like this, then lay flat in Shavasana. So if you can, I want you to really relax like you're in your most favorite Shavasana. But if your body will not do that, then you can lay down flat. Surrender the chest, the arms, and the legs. Come to your natural breath and follow it. Relax the eyes, the mouth. Get a sense of your natural breath. There's a certain analytical, intellectual uh, component to this. Almost feels a little bit like you're measuring. <clears throat> when that part of your brain kicks in, you wanna balance it with really softening and relaxing in your body. So the body releases and you're observing your natural breath. And yes, you're using part of your analytical um, mind, but don't let that override what you're doing. So you're still really letting go. You're just feeling your natural inhale, how it is, where it comes in, how fast is it traveling? And then the exhale, same thing, you're just 
observing. So you're becoming familiar with your natural breath. Those of you that do this all the time with me um, already have a sense of your natural breath. And so that you can be doing this fairly easily, really resting, softening and releasing. And then taking the exhalation a little longer. So we're going to do inhale normal, exhale extended. And as you're doing this, you're really relaxing. So you're trying to relax your throat, your eyes, your mouth, and allow that exhalation to go longer than normal. Smooth and steady, deep exhale out. And then the inhale that comes in is your normal inhale. And then you're following that again with the long, smooth, steady exhale. Observe what happens within you as you do it. Does your throat harden? Can you do it where you stay relaxed? Maybe you need to adjust slightly um, the timing uh, the, the rate of speed of your exhalation breath. Allow for as much relaxation across the face and throat as possible where you're taking a long emptying exhale without straining. Complete that cycle, don't rush, but just empty out that long exhale, go to normal inhale and then a normal exhale. So you'll be in normal breathing, recovery breaths, letting go, relax, release. When you go into an extended inhale breath, again, you're trying to find the ease and the softness. So not taking in so much that you um, feel pressure in your head. You shouldn't feel overwhelmed. If you do, you're just doing a little too much. So then <clears throat> emptying exhale. And then when you're ready, a long, smooth, steady, deeper inhale breath in. And then the exhale breath is your natural exhale. If you can, let your legs go out. So they're really, really resting. And then your inhale is a long, smooth inhale in. And that exhale breath is your natural exhale. It may feel like you want to empty all that breath out, but just try to go to your normal natural exhale and another long, smooth inhale breath in. Again, observe what's happening within you as you're doing these. How do you feel? Can you really let go? Long, smooth, steady inhale in. Normal exhale out. What's the result for you? And then transitioning out of this one, we're going to slowly let the exhale breaths extend. So little by little, each exhale, let it get a little longer. So it goes eventually to a long, smooth inhale in, long, smooth exhale out. And what is this result for you? How are you feeling? Can you relax the throat? Can you relax the eyes? What is the quality, the steadiness of your mind as you're doing this? Smooth, steady, inhale in. Smooth, steady, exhale out. Really letting loose. And 
Relax the jaw and the throat. Complete the cycle, don't rush, just exhale out that long emptying exhale when you're ready and go to normal breathing. And those of you that are still elevated with the bolster underneath your spine, roll over, take it away and lay down flat. Those that are flat can just stay. Just take your time laying down. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. Just lay yourself down. We're not gonna do any more breathing exercises. So you're just to really let go. Relax the tongue, let your breath be. gradually if you are ready to come up really gradually take your time since you're at home of course if you want to stay you can just stay <clears throat> those that are moving lay on your side when you're ready take your time Because a number of people are still laying down, I'm just gonna um, be quiet. And I did uh, record this one, so it'll eventually be on our YouTube channel. Namaste.